my name is Kate. I'm one of the keepers here at the zoo, and I am so excited to talk to you about my favorite animals here, the white-faced sake monkeys. So I actually have some of their lunch here right now. It's kind of a late breakfast, but we wanted to show you some of the foods they get to eat. So I'm gonna scatter it around the exhibit. We're gonna watch them forage, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them and why they're so great. So you'll watch them start pulling stuff out of things, probably throwing things on the floor because monkeys are a little messy. And when they don't like something, or if it's not their favorite, they just want to get it out of the way. So we currently have four monkeys in our group. We have two males and two females. We have mom, dad, daughter Clementine, and baby Bundy. Bundy is our newest boy. So right here, up top, you can see mom, Lexi, and baby Bundy is still holding on to her right now. They don't really come off of mom until about five months. So he's kind of like a little bit of a backpack. And anything she eats, he's going to try and eat too. Behind Bungie and Lexi is Clementine. So that's our other daughter. She is two years old. She actually just celebrated her second birthday on Mother's Day. So she just turned two. And Bungie, their son, her brother, just turned three months old today. Opus, the dad, is hanging out somewhere. He'll probably come in in a little bit. But you'll notice that Opus, Lexi, Clementine, and Bungie are kind of different in colors. And that's because they're, they have, males are black with white faces, so even though the entire species is called a white-faced sake monkey, only the males are the ones that are fully black with a white face. So that's called dimorphism, kind of like cardinals, where male cardinals will be red and females will kind of be more of a brownish color. That's the same way with our sake monkeys. So with babies, when they're born, they're still that brown color, and you actually don't know right away if they're male or female, unless you get a good look at them, but their colors will start changing at about two to three months old. So that's how we were able to tell that Bungie was a boy, because when he comes over here in a little bit, you'll notice that he's already getting a white face. So that's super cute. It's sometimes kind of hard to tell the difference between Clementine and Lexi. I mean, it's a little easy right now because Lexi is carrying a baby, but sometimes Clementine will actually help. And that's, that's like a shared parent thing that the females will do. And that's helpful for mom. So daughter gets some practice holding a baby and carrying a baby. So one day when she's a mom of her own, she'll have that practice. And there's Opus, so let me see if he wants a good treat. Do you want some banana? There you go. So Opus is actually 20 years old. His birthday is December 10th. Lexi is six years old. Clementine is two years old. And baby Bungie is only three months old. Here's Clementine again. Do you want banana? Your mom wants banana. So you'll notice that I'm putting their food in a whole bunch of different devices and toys. We call this scatter feeding to encourage foraging. So we'll put stuff in puzzle feeders to make it a little bit more difficult for them to get their food and recreate what they'd be doing in the wild. Because in the wild they spend most of their time looking for food and they'd be going through the forest looking and it doesn't come easy to them. Sometimes they have to go to the very tips of branches and get fruit that way. So we, make, we like to replicate that and make it a little difficult too. So we have all sorts of enrichment devices, toys, some of which we're really fortunate to get donated from our Amazon wish list, like this toy car that they sometimes like to hang out in. And then this toy right behind you is actually a bath toy that you can put on your shower or your tub and then let water run down and we use that for them too. So we get pretty creative. The babies, Clementine and Bungie, really seem to like toys with bells recently. So sometimes we'll see him just jingling things away, kind of getting used to his environment and learning all about the space that he's taking up right now. 
So Bundy is growing up, and in about five months, he will stop hanging on to mom, and she'll kind of push him off, and he will do things on his own. Oh, okay, Opus didn't want that. If you notice a little bit before I went to give him food, you notice that he was rubbing his chin on branches. That's called scent marking. So that's what they'll do to tell each other that they're part of the same group. And the same, a group of monkeys is actually called a troop or sometimes a barrel of monkeys, which is pretty funny. I think that sometimes these guys, a group of monkeys is just trouble because they're very mischievous and fun. Let's see if Opus wants to pick out what he wants today. So we've got all sorts of food in here. Right now he's going for banana. Sometimes he likes to take a bite of things and then throw it on the ground. They're quite messy. Right now he's eating cantaloupe. So they get all sorts of greens, fruits and vegetables, and then they'll also eat nuts and seeds and hard boiled eggs. And they also will sometimes eat insects. So their favorite food by far though is nuts. So that's a little piece of almond and he's gonna be pretty thrilled about that. So in the wild, they would also eat fruit. They would look for insects in all sorts of uh, tree logs or branches. And pretty much anything that they can get, they would even probably try and eat small lizards or small mammals if they can catch them. Go ahead, you can pick. Oh, here comes mom and baby. So like I said, they could be a little messy. Mom tends to take a couple of handfuls for the road so she can just make a spot and hang out. I'm gonna put some more stuff out to see if they wanna come out and hang out with us a little bit lower. Let's see, we'll put a bunch of food there. And some more over here. So besides the boys and the girls, which are a little easy to tell apart right now because Opus has a black, a black body and a white face, and Lexi and Clem are a little bit darker, we get a lot of questions on how to tell them apart. And let me see if I can get Clementine. Clem, come here. Clementine over here. So I have a nut, which is her favorite food. You'll notice that Clementine has some white on her forehead in between her eyes. I call it her little unibrow. And Lexi, unlike Clementine, kind of has a bowl haircut. She doesn't have that white in between. So if Bungie was not hanging out and <laughs> he's doing his own thing over there. If he wasn't hanging on top of mom, come here. Oh, we've got the whole family here. So you'll see that she doesn't really have the same white on her forehead, Lexi, Lexi, as Clementine does. It's there, but not as distinct. And that's kind of how we can tell them apart. Sometimes Bungie will catch rides on Clementine and then you get really confused as to who's who because usually it's always Lexi carrying him, but sometimes it can be Clementine. So these guys can live up to 30 years old. I think the oldest one on record is about 34. So their typical lifespan is anywhere from 15 to 25. Older than that, and they're getting up there. But like I said, Opus is 20, and he looks pretty good for 20. So you'll notice these guys, they look kind of big, but they're actually not that big. They're only about four to five pounds, and this is mostly just fur. It's their big, floofy monkeys. So under all that fur, they have tiny little bodies, but as they run around, you'll see that they have really springy legs. Those legs can enable them to jump up to 30 feet, which is pretty crazy. So these guys can just leap through the canopy they also sometimes get the nickname flying monkeys because they're so fast through the, uh, through the forest that you blink and they're almost gone. You'll notice that their tails are just straight and fluffy, but they're not curling around anything. So they do not have prehensile tails like some other monkey species, but they do use those big bushy tails as balance. So when they're walking around, that's their little balancing beam. So Clementine right there, they just did an alarm call. So something spooked them and they all ran away and now they're back. So they realize it wasn't a big deal, whatever they thought it was, but they'll make a lot of noises with each other. So that's kind of a happy chirp content that he's eating. When they're scared, they'll do a short alarm burst, alarm call. 
And when they're upset, they'll actually puff up their bodies, they'll kind of growl, and they'll shake branches. <laughs> Bungie's discovering himself in the mirror right now. He's not quite sure what to think of that, uh, that monkey over there. <laughs> So like I said earlier, we have a whole bunch of different enrichment to make sure that they don't get, they're, they're always using their minds and, and being creative and finding new ways to eat and play with things. They also have an outdoor exhibit. It's a little too chilly for them today, but anytime it's over 60 degrees, we let them outside and they get to play out there too. So you'll notice that Opus is sitting on this kind of stand right here, and we actually use this platform for training. So what we'll do is we'll actually get a parrot perch, a shower parrot perch that, that they make, and we can stick it to the plexiglass here, and then we can train them to hold on to that parrot perch, and they will stand voluntarily for x-ray. So if the perch was here, it would be something like that, and then we could take an x-ray of their body, and that's how we were able to confirm that Lexi was pregnant with both Clementine and baby Bungie because we were able to get voluntary x-rays with them just standing completely still. And we were able to see that they had a little bun in it. She had a little bun in the oven. They really like nuts. So they're gonna be pretty pushy at me right now. Um, some of the other training we do, there's a crate over here. I'll see if they, anybody wants to come into it. Do you wanna come in? She might not want to because she knows she's a little bit taller with baby Bundy. Oh, she might. Do you want to come in? <laughs> Clementine, you did, you did great. You did a good job. Clementine, of course, is going to try and cheat and reach from the back. But this crate training we use for transportation. So if they ever need to go somewhere in a hurry, we can ask them to go into this crate. Opus actually will shut the door behind him himself. And then we can carry the crate off and take them to wherever they need to go. And that comes in handy because eventually Clementine will no longer be with us. These guys are part of a species survival program, which means that eventually she's going to have a boyfriend of her own. You want to go in? Not a Clementine for you? Oh, Bungie's, Bungie's creeping off, so I'm not going to ask you to go anywhere. Bungie, you can try it, but I don't know if you're going to really like nuts right now. I don't think you have all of your teeth. But Clementine is actually going to be paired up with a boyfriend at the coat, that's <laughs> my finger. He's, he's obviously hungry. Maybe I should see if he wants uh, some food of his own. Um, would you like some fry meat? Oh, there you go. That was pretty cute. So this stuff that I have in my hands is called pan fry meat diet. And it's essentially everything they would need in a can form. So almost like how dog food comes in a can. This also comes in a can. You want to try that one? Okay, that's pretty cute. Okay, <laughs> so he does have some teeth, I can confirm. But, but not a lot, and they're not sharp yet. Let's go back over here, guys. Right here? Good job. So, like I said, Clementine is going to get a boyfriend of her own one day. Because even though these guys are least concerned, so they're not endangered in the wild, we still want to make sure that their genetics are well represented in case anything happens because their populations are decreasing. So Lexi's being a little bit of a bully right now because she's like, I'm feeding for two, so I need all the nuts. Um, these guys are native to Brazil and Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname. And like I said, they're not, they're not endangered, but some of the animals that they share their habitats with are golden lion tamarins, who you may have seen across the way if you've ever visited us here, those guys are endangered. So even though these guys aren't in threat of becoming extinct just yet, their buddies, their, their friends, their cousins um, are. So we need to make sure we protect everybody. So eventually Clementine is gonna go to her own facility, get a boyfriend of her own, and hopefully make babies that way. If you actually pan up, if they go back that way, You'll see their other friend, Uncle Mike. Mike is a green iguana. They do play with him sometimes. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about him later this week. But you would find green iguanas in the same area that you'd find sake monkeys. So it's not unusual for him to share that, uh, that space. Okay, so now it's time for questions. I could talk about these guys all day, but I would love to answer some of your questions. 
So Mason wants to know if they sleep during the day. They really don't sleep too much through the day, especially mom. She's got her hands full with this baby. Um, sometimes you'll see them relaxing, but they're not really asleep. Usually at about five o'clock, they'll climb up to the highest parts of this exhibit, curl up in a little ball and go to sleep that way. And that's when they like to go to sleep. Zeb and Asher would like to know how old Saki monkeys can live to be. So Saki monkeys can usually live up to about 25 years old. I think the oldest one on record is about 34. And Opus right here, he's actually 20 years old. So he's getting up there in age. Zachary would like to know when their birthdays are, and I would love to tell you. Um, Opus's birthday is December 10th, so he's right here. Clementine is up here running away. Hers was May 10th, so not too long ago. Lexi's is February 27th. She's six years old. And Bungie's birthday was February 12th, so he is now three months old. So like I said, you can kind of see that he's starting to get that white face and dark body. That's how we know he's definitely a boy. Emily wants to know what defense mechanisms they have. So these guys being really cute and small, they don't have a whole lot of defense mechanisms. If they see a predator, what they're going to do is sound the alarm, make an alarm call, and run. If they see something that scares them but they think they can intimidate it, they'll puff up, get really fluffy, and then shake branches and make a lot of noise to try and scare whatever that is away. I know, Lexi's all about the nuts. <laughs> so that little squeak, somebody heard something they didn't like and it scared them, so they all ran away, but they'll come back. See, it doesn't take long. Um, Ronan wants to know, do all monkeys really eat bananas? In my experience, our monkeys really love bananas. I don't think all monkeys love bananas, but a lot of them do. And a lot of people will ask what the difference between a monkey and an ape is. Well, the main difference is that tail right there. Most great apes, the bigger guys, gorillas, orangutans, those guys don't have tails. Monkeys usually always have tails. So that's one of the ways to tell. Alex would like to know what their favorite thing to do. Well, it depends on the monkey. Lexi's favorite thing to do is eat. Opus's favorite thing to do is eat. Clementine's favorite thing to do is eat, but she also likes playing with her keepers a lot. You'll see videos sometimes on, um, on our Facebook page of her, don't be so fresh, of her bouncing off my head. She likes to play in that hammock over there. That's actually our baby catching hammock. So if that baby were climbing around and being a little silly, we have that hammock. So if he fell from somewhere way too high, like right up there, he would be caught in the hammock, and it actually has proven useful a few times. Oh, Clementine's in here trying to show off that she knows what to do, that she can create, and she's being really good about it. So I'm going to give her some rewards for that, and then we'll give Lexi <laughs> some rewards because she's feeding for two. Um, so like I said, Clementine is very mischievous, and she kind of rockets all over the place. So her favorite thing to do is eat and play with her keepers, you're not going to climb onto me, miss. Um, I don't have anything in that hand. So those are some of their favorite things to do. Uh, let's see. How do they climb trees so well? Joseph would like to know. Well, if you look at their hands, they have really long, slender fingers along with their feet. That's not food legs. Um, that allows them to grip the branches really well. You can see their feet are just gripping around down there. Oh, Clementine's stealing. She's stealing from my, my little uh, tree pouch here. She just climbed down and helped herself. Um, like I said, they're pretty mischievous. Um, so they can climb so well because of the, no, no, miss. I'm gonna shut this so you can't just freeload here, lady. Nice try. It's closed now. <laughs> so they can climb so well because of their, their feet and their hands and they're small. So they're lightweight and they could just run through the trees. Maggie would like to know if they like to play with the hanging toy car in their exhibit. Yes, Clementine loves that toy car. She loves to play in it. She loves to hang from the ropes. She loves everything about toys. Isaiah and Esther would like to know how long their tails are. That's a really good question. I'd say their tails 
are probably around a foot and a half to two feet, two feet long. Sorry, uh, Clementine, like I said, can, can get a little needy if she's not getting all the attention. Uh, Sophia would like to know how old baby Bungie is. Bungie just turned three months old today, and he's messing with the mirror right there, trying to, trying to figure out what's going on with that other monkey in the reflection. Hunter would like to know why we put food in different places. And that's to keep things variable, to keep changing things up so they don't always know where the food's coming from. And sometimes they have to work for it. So we'll put it really high or really low so they have to kind of climb down and dangle. And that's because in the wild, that food isn't coming easily to them. So they do have to work for it. So we like to mix it up to keep them guessing. Amelia would like to know, oh, this is a very good question. Do sake monkeys mate for life? Yes, they do. So they'll tend to live in small family groups. And then eventually the little male and female monkeys will go, their babies will go and find their own groups of monkeys and make families of their own. Courtney would like to know, do they swing from branch to branch by their arms like other primates? So yes, they certainly can. Clementine is a prime example of that. And actually, I bet if I show her a nut, she might dangle a little bit. Um, so you can kind of see how she's using that, that arm and even her feet to hold on. They can swing from branch to branch, but it's usually short bursts. The other monkeys or apes that you see really swinging from branch to branch, they have really strong upper bodies and upper body strength and arms. And those guys are like gibbons and stuff like that. So they're really quick swinging around. These guys can swing, but they're better at jumping and climbing. Blackio would like to know what they like to play with. Uh, everything, <laughs> everything they can. They like to play with each other. They'll groom each other. They'll play with the toys on exhibit. The baby monkeys really like toys that jingle or make noise. Um, sometimes you'll be cleaning in here and you'll just hear a lot of ruckus and that's them. They're usually creating their own band or something. So we have an Amazon wish list and we usually put a lot of baby toys on there because they really seem to like stuff that makes a lot of noise like rattles. So those are probably their favorite toys. John wants to know, as Bungie grows, will two males be okay in the same group? Yeah, they usually are for a while. In the wild, they would then go off and try and find their own girlfriends. But we have seen a lot of facilities that are able to house a few males together without issues. So that's what we will plan on doing, plan to do, unless somebody, uh, unless the SSP tells us that they'd like to pair Bungie up with a girlfriend somewhere else. And in that case, then he'll find his own facility. We've also thought of toying with the idea of putting our golden lion tamarins in with our sake monkeys because they can be seen together in the wild and they usually coexist very peacefully. So yes, we, we expect them to get along. Opus is a very laid back dad. So I don't really think that we're gonna see any problems with aggression as Bungie gets older. Chris would like to know if they have an outdoor exhibit. Yes, they do. If you look to my right above Clementine, you'll see a window. That is a little ship tunnel where they go through to their holding and then they go down through a tunnel and go to their outdoor exhibit. So sometimes when they know that you're setting up their outdoor exhibit, they'll actually sit at that window and watch you as if, hey, you're taking too long, I'd like to go outside now. But it's still a little chilly for them today. It needs to be around 60 degrees before we can let them outside. So they're gonna stay inside today and hang out with Uncle Mike, their iguana friend. Uh, Brianna and Joey would like to know how high they can jump. That's a really good question. They can definitely jump uh, further distance wise, like length wise, than they can height wise. But I've seen Clementine jump from the ground straight up about this height. So probably around four and a half feet. I imagine they could probably do, do more than that. But they'd like to climb a little bit better. So usually when they're jumping, they're jumping from branch to branch. Deborah would like to know, have they ever mistakenly jumped on you when you were in their exhibit caring for them? This one right here, it's never a mistake. She likes to play with us all the time. So sometimes when I'm cleaning the, the exhibit floor, um, she will actually bounce off my back. I have a video of her bouncing off my head. And sometimes she'll play with my hair. So they're never doing it in an aggressive way. 
they're just curious. They're little babies, so they just want to see what's going on. But yes, um, sometimes they, they're very, very curious and they like to interact with us as we're cleaning. Sometimes we like to joke around that Clementine is helping us as we clean. Okay, Augie would like to know if they have thumbs. They do, but they're kind of longer. So let me see if I can get somebody back over here. Come here. So you can see that she, she's holding. <laughs> they do. Can, you, can you show? It's hard to see on this side, but their, their thumbs are kind of just like long skinny fingers in a way, but that does allow them to grip branches. Megan would like to know why they are here at Elmwood. So we actually got these guys from other facilities and these guys are ambassadors for their species. So even though they're not endangered in the wild, their population numbers are declining. So we want to make sure that we can have a population that if we ever need to reestablish them in the wild, we can do that. And we've actually done that with the golden lion tamarind species. They've done captive reintroduction programs in zoos and helped repopulate their wild population. So we have them in zoos to kind of safeguard their future in the wild. Joe, age four and a half, would like to know when Bungie will stop riding on mom's back. Probably in the next two months. So when they're born, they actually cling to mom's belly. And then at around two months old, they'll switch to the back. So right now he's a little backpack monkey. And as he interacts with his exhibit with his mom, you'll see that he's kind of climbing off sometimes. So he's starting to explore by himself. And eventually he will be off mom completely at about five months old. And I imagine that's where the real fun will begin because him and Clementine will be quite the pair when it comes to being mischievous. So we'll see when that happens. We're gonna have our hands full. Carol would like to know if they play well together. Yes, they do. They play really well together. So well, in fact, that Clementine, big sister, will actually carry Bungie on her back, just like her mom, which is really, really cute to watch. And it's also prepping her to have kids of her own one day and understand what it's like to carry her babies around. So it's good practice. Okay, we have three more questions. One from Marin. Are there any foods that are dangerous for them to eat? In the wild, there definitely are some toxic plants that they shouldn't eat, but they're usually pretty smart enough to avoid them. Um, at the zoo, there's really nothing that we would give them that wouldn't be safe for them to eat. Obviously, we wouldn't give them any silly foods like chocolate or anything like that. Um, but, but in the wild, they would stay away instinctually from foods that might be toxic. And they learn from experience. So um, through as their generations pass on, they'll know, hey, that, that plant right there, I shouldn't eat that because it tastes bad or things like that. Um, what do they eat in the wild? They eat a lot of fruits, they eat little bugs, and they'll even eat small lizards and anything they can kind of catch. So maybe even some small mammals. They also really like seeds and nuts. So that's how I was able to get their attention so well earlier because they really, really love nuts. Focus, well, come here. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more nuts just to keep them with us for a little bit longer. It's right behind you, buddy. Yeah, you gotta look for it. Um, so the last question we have are what are their predators in the wild? These guys actually have a lot of predators because they're so small. So it can range from anything like jaguars or small cats, ocelots, to they have to be careful when they're in the trees as well because big birds like birds of prey, eagles and hawks will actually try and carry them off too. And then they could be susceptible to large snakes as well like anacondas. So they kind of have their hands full trying to steer clear of, of predators. They've got quite a few of them, but that's why they're so loud when they need to do an alarm call. They'll just do a very, very loud screech and everybody will run for cover. We also wanted to wish Alice a happy birthday because today is her birthday. You share a really close birthday to Clementine, Alice, so happy birthday. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, Clementine is now on the ground, <laughs> thinking about what she might have forgotten to grab, and she's back. So I think that's all we have for today, guys, but I really hope you enjoyed watching our Saki Monkeys. 
They're one of my favorite, favorite animals to work with at the zoo. They always keep you guessing. And um, they're one of my favorite animals to train as well because they're so intelligent. So if you have any more questions, I will be on the Facebook uh, live chat to be able to answer your questions in the comments. I do love talking about these guys. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And we're not sure where Clementine's going yet. Okay. <laughs> but we hope you, have, you enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks for uh, visiting Oakland. Have a good one. Bye.